Huntsville, Alabama, NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. Here, in March of 2011, astrobiologist Richard Hoover reports the extraordinary news that he found microfossil organisms, or ancient bacteria, inside rare meteorites that are more than four billion years old, dating back to the birth of our solar system. Until recently, scientists did not believe life could survive the rigors of space travel. But Hoover's findings suggests that live bacteria made it to Earth and may have even taken root here. Microorganisms trapped inside comets can survive the travel through interplanetary space and interstellar space. And the reason is that microorganisms are trapped in the rocky core. Around, you have a thick shield of icy material. And on top, you have a stratification of dust. Dust is highly effective in shielding the microorganism from ultraviolet light. So comets are an excellent vehicle to transport microorganisms, single cell life, amino acid in the vastness of space. The theory that life on Earth began with alien organisms landing here from other parts of the universe is controversial. Called panspermia, one of the most vocal proponents of this theory was Sir Francis Crick, a British scientist who co-discovered DNA in 1953. Our Francis Crick and Francis Crick, co-discoverer of the double helix in cells, said that all this can't happen by chance, but has to have been engineered. One of his arguments is that the rotation of the DNA is in the same direction for all living things. Had DNA developed on Earth, it would probably have had a 50-50 distribution. And that's exactly what we don't have. Today, scientists know that only about 5% of the DNA contained in our genes is used to reproduce human beings. The remainder is an undecipherable code, once referred to as junk DNA. Just because we cannot decipher 95% of our genetic material doesn't necessarily mean that that 95% is in fact useless. Nature is extremely efficient. DNA is the most powerful storage device in the universe. Not even with all the supercomputers combined in the world could we store as much information as we could store on DNA. So I'm suggesting that the ultimate proof of extraterrestrial life will not be found in a crashed spaceship or in a text, but it will be found within our own genes.